Hey there, I'm Brent Calmer, perfumer and perfume lover. Welcome to my channel, In Descents with Brent, where the goal is to help you appreciate even more the perfumes you love by understanding more about what goes into them. In this first episode, we're going to take on one of the most iconic, enduring, and beautiful notes in perfumery, Lily the Valley. Let's get started. So first off, what is Lily the Valley? Well, it's a white bell-shaped flower that grows wild throughout the woodlands of the cooler parts of Europe and Asia. It has a sweet, fresh scent that the 17th century English botanist Nicholas Culpepper called pleasant and grateful. And sometimes you'll hear Lily the Valley referred to by its French name of Mouguet, and this in perfumery distinguishes Lily the Valley from other types of lily. And even though it's quite nice to look at, all parts of it are poisonous, so you want to stay away from ingesting it in any form. Lily the Valley has a rich history in mythology and legend. In many historical references, it represents the promise of spring and of rebirth, and in others it symbolizes grief and sadness. The Greek god Apollo is said to have given some to his son Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine, and probably the most famous historical reference to Lily the Valley in literature, uh, in scripture, occurs in the Old Testament Song of Solomon, in chapter 2, verse 1, I am a rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Now this is really an exalted role for, for the lily of the valley because the Song of Solomon is essentially a love poem from God to his people. Also probably owing to the shape of the flower, it's sometimes called Our Lady's Tears in reference to the tears shed by the Blessed Virgin Mary as she gazed upon her crucified son. In paganism, Lily the Valley is associated with the element of air and with the planet Mercury. And it is believed that inhaling the scent of the fresh flowers strengthens conscious mind and memory. Next up, perfume. But first, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like or a comment. Probably the most famous Lily the Valley perfume is the 1956 Diorissimo which was created by Edmond Rudnitska for Christian Dior. Now this was a tall order for Rudnitska because Lily the Valley was actually Christian Dior's favorite flower, so much so that he would sometimes sew a sprig of it into the hem of his garments for good luck. Rudnitska bucked the trend of his time towards sweet gourmandy florals and came up with something completely different, which was a fresher, greener, more transparent take on the floral with Lily the Valley in the starring role. And while such solo floors, as they're known, uh, perfumes that focus on a single flower, are less common these days, Lily of the Valley is still a ubiquitous perfume note. Okay, let's talk about the perfume pyramid. Lily of the Valley occurs most often as a middle or a heart note, and it's extremely versatile. So at the top, it complements well green leaf notes such as uh, galbanum, which is what Diorissimo uses, as well as citruses such as bergamot and grapefruit. On the base, it uh, complements earthy and woody notes really well. So uh, the original Diorissimo uses a base of sandalwood and civet, and the 2009 Eau de Parfum by Francois de Marchi uses white musk. So that just goes to show you how versatile Lily the Valley can be. It also has something of a perfume superpower, which is that it helps to harmonize other flowers, particularly other white flowers, again, in the case of Diorissimo, harmonizing the jasmine and the along along. And now for the brief science geek out portion of the program. All Lily of the Valley Accords uh, in perfumery are actually synthetic reconstructions because there's no known method for extracting Lily of the Valley oil. And so you, what you smell in your favorite Mouguet is actually a mixture of uh, synthetically and naturally derived molecules. Now, traditionally, one of the most important of these was hydroxy citronellol, which has kind of a waxy melon citrusy scent. But this has been restricted to very low levels in use by IFRA, the International Fragrance Association, kind of the self-governing body of the fragrance industry globally. And so uh, perfumes like Diorissimo have had to be reformulated a number of times to take into account the new rules. And sometimes, of course, this happens to the widespread grumbling of perfume lovers. But there you have it. You now know more than 99% of other perfume lovers about Lily the Valley. In the next section, I'll give you a couple of my picks uh, for a favorite Lily the Valley solo floors. Now my current favorite Lily the Valley solo floor, or Mouguet solo floor, is Dior's Lucky. This is part of Dior's private collection, created by Francois de Machy, and it really focuses, of course, on the Lily the Valley Accord with some nice other sparkling white flower elements to it. Uh, I also have heard great things about Cartier's Pour Mouguet. Haven't tried that one, so I can't speak directly to it. Uh, I did stop a woman in the coffee shop the other day and asked her what she had on. It was a very nice uh, Lily the Valley scent. It was Clinique. She didn't know what, what the name of the scent was, but I'm going to hazard a guess that it was 
my happy lily of the beach that seems to be the one that best fits the profile that i smell it's a very nice fresh somewhat aquatic lily of the valley scent so there you have it those are my picks if you have favorites of your own please leave them in the comments i would love to hear from you or if you have a question i'll do my best to answer and uh, thanks again for watching see you next time